So hi guys, um, I'm going to be doing a pretty brief um, introduction to the manuscript 3516 de la Bibliothèque de l'Arsenal, um, BNF, which is Bibliothèque Nationale de France. Uh, it is, I would say, my favourite manuscript. It's available online in colour. If it weren't, it probably wouldn't be. One of the other ones of my favourites is 1955 Francais de la BNF. Um, so I could probably no problem making a, a video that's an hour just on this manuscript, but uh, that's absolutely not what I'm planning to do. So I will be pretty brief. Forgive any points that I could have made that I'm not making. So first of all, just have a look how nice to use this website is, and they've made improvements like I would say this year. Um, so I can screw, uh, zoom in and out, so that's the whole thing. You can see the image, the miniature from the other side bleeding through there. In fact, you can see the letters, that's really common, that's not unusual at all. So if we uh, zoom in a bit, um, I want to start up here. Par tout en compte qu'il commence. Uh, the reason you know it's commence and not commence is because it rhymes with obedience, which obviously doesn't have an acute, because acutes aren't used. They appear at the start of the 16th century. Uh, we're going to see a good example of that uh, pretty soon. Um, so you can see this is poetry, it rhymes, there's no punctuation. You might get a, an odd bit as I scroll through, it's not impossible. This is a rubric, so called, because rubare is the Latin for red. So, rubric, miniature here. I mean, it says Eve here. So, the, the image. I should also say this is, I, I believe, is completed. The date I found online is very precise. It's completed the 2nd of February 1288. So it's 700 and a bit, 732 years old to the whole year. And you can you can certainly recognise this story. And I guess that's Eve. I mean, those are breasts, I guess. Um, you can't really tell the difference between the two figures, can you? But I'm not one for focusing on miniatures, so I won't. Just have a look at uh, some abbreviations. This is... Manuscript is pretty chocked through of them. So if you don't know medieval manuscript uh, abbreviations, you're in trouble straight away. Adams estuat en paradis, so par, which this abbreviation in Latin is pair. It's both, so you can have like perdre written like that, or paradis. Ou mult avoir de ces delis, so that's mult, M L T with a little line there. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Again, that's going to make a one hour video. Um, a joie, a solas, a dépôt, so that's a, as in et, and, I always pronounce it e. It can be et. The t probably isn't silent yet, but you get it written without the t as one letter, a. A de sa femme avoir confort. This is the Tyronean con, as in Tyro was the scribe of uh, Cicero, and he came up with this system for writing quicker, and that's con, C O N, con for, comfort, of course. Uh, again, not going to read um, every line. Uh, Li oiselle a sa main venoit. Venoyant is probably how it's pronounced. So that's man. So that line there, which is normally would just be over the eye, which is pretty much over the whole thing here, signifies that there's an N that's not been written. So it replaces the N. Venoyant. Um, same thing here. That is really just over the ear, isn't it? Et le poisson. So it's probably not pronounced poisson, by the way. Poisson. Roughly, um, saw the gravel. So there's no distinction in this. The telling the difference between U and N is often very difficult. In this, it really isn't. Which, if you look at some of these examples, like this one, which is a U or a V, 
But then if you look at the end there, the end there, and there, and there, they're all quite easy to tell apart, which is something you're quite grateful for. It saves you because there are times when it gets ambiguous when both options, if it were a U or it were an N, would both be a word. Um, and they both be word that fits in context, and it drives you absolutely mad. Um, so skip through this a little bit. You've got the another missing N, so Asamang, Com si les pust de pang, uh, Ultra. That's a good one, actually. Leon's pour l'autre ne sommeil. So sommeil, as we know, as a noun. Um, mostly French sommeil, sommeil, yeah, old French. So the superscript E, like this, stands for Ari, ultra. And I've seen it here, ultra. Um, key. So... Or k, it depends. Actually, that one's ambiguous. That one, I think, is k. Key is the one with a little i, um, which I have seen here somewhere. Ne nul cause say biang. So b n horizontal line over the n biang, the adverb, or it can be a noun, of course. But um, the distinction between capital and lowercase g isn't respected as we would do it, so we've got Griffon here, so that's a capital G, but we've got La Gru, I think that's Gru, not, um, but Faucon, actually that's unusual to see a word end with a Tyronian con, I actually don't think I've ever seen like that, I thought it was Faust at first, but no, it's Faucon, or Faucon, roughly how it's pronounced at the time. Um, Cascuna besta estoit crivea. So we've got that is a missing R I. So P R I denoted up here V E E crivea. I will um, keep. Uh, oh, we've got nature. That's quite a good one. Um, plus. So that sort of curly thing. It looks a little bit like a nine. Plus li avoir donne nature. That's quite a good example of don or donne. You have to read the text and get it from the context of which it is. Uh, nature. So this thing here takes various different forms. It looks a bit like a U. Is in fact, in this one it is, but normally it would be U R. But so, but the R is here, which is natura. Uh, priest is the same as we saw with Privé. Priest au diable compagnie. Parson orgoy. So we've got a capital, this is a capital G here in the middle of a word. Parson orgoy, because the um, distinction doesn't really exist yet. Lucifer. So We've got affair rhyming a few apalace, so there's no acute there, but it has to be because and he was called Lucifer, so we know there is an acute there when we transcribe it, but it's not in the manuscript. Now, Bote that's a really good example. Obviously, Bote always has an acute on the e, there's no ambiguity in modern French. Si on grant Bote. So that is, that's also used for quant, when you've got a Q, which is quant or quant. Um, if I can search for long enough, I'll be able to find that. So um, that rhymes with et mis en tel bonheur te, which is bonheur, happiness. Qu'il n'est en, or qui, so that's qui, vous, Sass dear, so I describe that, tra transcribe that depending on the text, vus or vos. It's generally, that is the us symbol, um, but in this case, 
it's a Picard manuscript. You'd be perfectly entitled to um, transcribe that US. Con Lavois, and that's a good example of how it's ambiguous. There's no space, there's no um, apostrophe. Is it La Voix or La Voix? So there's three possibilities. L apostrophe avoir, la voix, the verb laver, to wash, or la voix, as in see it. And that's why, you know, trying to transcribe that out of context, you couldn't do it. You'd have to read like the, the lines that come before it and after it. Um, Il vit son bon et says Garda, et de sa beauté sorgoya, et dis is que de vers bees, I think that is, or is it vies? Vies probably makes more sense looking at that. Da 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 da, rond droite service. And there, perdon, so I, I made the example paradis, which is here. This is perdon. Perdre to lose. A pause fou à droit perdant. I'll just see if there's anything else. The, uh, oh, we've got prong droit here. So I won't do the whole thing. So starting with the red L. Les serpents et à une part. Et is was. No longer exists that word. Qui sauvant. So that we know souvent isn't a word. It'll be sauvant, which is often. Se prendra, se prendra. There's no R there actually. So that'll be passé simple. Regarde que la femme qu'il fait. Well, anyway, I could go on, like I say, there's nothing else here that I think I absolutely have to tell you. I've got on quist there. So that, instead of being RI, because it's after a Q, is UI. Because obviously it's not on Christ with QRI. So, de Jost Louis, C. Lee, on Christ. So, this is really, it is an introduction to my favourite manuscript, but it's been more about how difficult it is to know um, that there's no punctuation, spacing, you can't rely on it 100%. So yeah, the spacing could be the way we'd write it now, or it could be there's a space missing. Or you get a space in the middle of a word, where it's pretty clear that it's all one word, and just for some reason there's a space. Uh, so yeah, it's difficult. It's not just a case of writing what you see. You've got to look at the ambiguities uh, and work out from the context what it could mean. And just occasionally you get, um, like I was saying about lavoit, which I didn't read in context because I was reading quite quickly. You get um, you get real ambiguities that you kind of sometimes you just have to pick one. You have to say this is what I think it means. This is what I'm going to write. But yes, trying to keep this video under ten minutes completely failed. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll try and make some shorter uh, videos on medieval manuscripts.